because through this pandemic year or the previous year as well, all of the people have transformed into working from home or actually even studying for the for the students as well as for the whole community. And this happens just as a snap overnight. Everybody was actually uh, online, be it with their bringing their own devices or with their actual, uh, basically personal devices in that perspective. So with that, the dependency increased on technology, definitely. And along with that dependency comes a lot of uh, threats. One of the most and major ones is, we always see it uh, recently, is again the phishing attack, the social engineering that happens really, and it's a door opening for many further attacks. One of them is the ransomware, for example. We heard of many of those ransomwares recently, and they really impacted big companies as well as even small companies. And even in some cases, it even caused the loss of life of some of those health institutes. So uh, phishing or social engineering as well as ransomware are really an important um, threat that we all need to prepare with. Another point is, since we all moved to the cloud and all of our technologies or data are in that cloud, so securing those clouds and patching, be it an API or be it any of the other uh, postures or controls that need to be actually done there. So securing or cloud security is one of the major uh, important uh, mitigation that need to be actually added and worked on. And the last, the last um, a threat we see it's on the mobile device itself. The mobile device itself from uh, vulnerabilities that it has, from the applications that it could actually open some ports or open some uh, exploits in, in such mobiles. And I'm saying mobiles, what are the things we cannot do today without our mobile? Mostly all of our life is in that mobile. And because of this, we need to secure that device as much as we can. Uh, trust is really always built in transparency. And that transparency from such information sharing or even such uh, engagement through a specific operation or training or a mock type of uh, operation there is really will help in building that trust. Trust in the cybersecurity, as we saw it, it's again an important um, aspect to maintain with the government as well as with those private sectors. But it needs to be built in such transparency as well as an information sharing where everybody will really feel they are together. And again, it's a mutual interest, it's a common threat that we all are actually trying to defend from. And this is, is a fairest line of uh, engagement and trust, if we may say it as well. So UAE is going through a whole digital transformation framework, which actually dictate more dependencies and technologies. And this is, as a matter of fact, will definitely depends on building more tools, more uh, frameworks, as well as postures in the cybersecurity arena. One is the laws and the governance of such laws and policies and standards that need to be actually in place. And the second is the technology. With this, with this platform of uh, JISEC, we are really eager to look and partner and network with many of those really big players who have such aspects and even small and medium businesses there who could actually help us on those niche aspects. And the most importantly, the people, the uh, human resources, the team who will actually support it in uh, securing this uh, nation. Again, nationwide or international wide, we have many people who are actually working together with us in order to build that uh, technologies as well as uh, uh, training, as well as enhancing many of those uh, frameworks that we have. So definitely those are the uh, three ideas that we already actually, and it is the main ideas as well, pillars of uh, cybersecurity, as a matter of fact. So, JISEC is really bringing everybody together under one umbrella. And we're talking about now the three Ps, uh, public, private, 
partnership that we are already actually asking for, but it's in a practical way. It's not only from a conceptual or subjective type of asset, but it's actually an objective and the real actions that we saw and we will always see during such events. JISEC will be the first line of actually gathering many of those information across many of those entities and really helping and knowing what are the challenges, the use cases, the scenarios that entities are really facing and trying to really solve, especially again with uh, the zero trust or with the uh, dependency on mobiles and the cloud that we see today across all of our activities. Cybercrime is an increase, ransomware, one of those that is actually we thought 2017 is the year of ransomware until we saw this year how and we still not even half of the year passed where we see a lot of attacks, a lot of uh, uh, ransomware as a service that are actually leveraged and used here and there. And because of this, having a platform that allows all of those uh, governments as well as private sectors gather together and really put those um, responses or uh, strategies of mitigating such cyber crimes will really help us together to be in a safer cyber space. I, I think and I believe as well in that, as we tried it with many multi as well as bilateral engagement, information sharing is the number one um, line of defense today we see. It. And really it builds on many of the uh, controls that we have in country and it gives us an accelerating and actually uh, defending as well as proactively looking and monitoring and even detecting such attacks prior to they are actually happening and really impacting the whole uh, framework of a specific nation. That's why the information sharing and really exchanging such information again, be it with the industries or be it with the government, this is always is an added value and this is what we are always eager to really build on and help this um, all of the communities and the cybersecurity is actually built on. The future of warfare, it's already in cyberspace. And this is what we saw and really noticed in many of the uh, recent cases. Moving all of the data of, again, small or medium or even large businesses on that cloud, this dictates that the next warfare, if it happens, it's actually attacking such clouds, attacking critical infrastructures that depends on such clouds, and attacking many of the IOTs that again uh, depends or uh, are the pillars of many of those critical infrastructure across all of those sectors. So cyber warfare, it is a hybrid um, information type of warfare and we see it it's coming if there is if it's not already actually happening across many uh, continent today so jisex is the largest regional um, platform and ideal platform that allows everybody not only to communicate and connect but also to learn and really see what are out there on this technologies JISEC today and especially coming after this pandemic and after an exact dependency of uh, technology where everybody is working online really brought and will bring a lot of um, new companies as well as new technologies or even algorithms be it based on the AI or on the digital transformation today we saw across many of those uh, companies. So. JISEC will really build that bridge and communicating across the whole regional as well as global aspects and will allow us to communicate and that's the most important things as well as educate, educate ourselves, educate the region and really learn towards many of those uh, things that we need to learn about. So this cybersecurity Congress will be held during this JISEC and it is one of its kind where we have not only um, friends as well as partners from industries or from governments, but also even some researchers, some really expertise who have been in the field, who are really a first hand responders to many of those cyber attacks. We will learn and we will really build on that learning to uh, build that 
proactive measures to allow us to defend all of our digital transformation assets that we are really depending on. And again, JISEC will make it really happen during this year.